as it relates to the men's basketball coaching search, Josh Dirtz, Pat Kelsey, and Shaheen Holloway are all pretty solid mid-major coaches, but there are some real concerns as to whether or not they could succeed at the University of Louisville. We'll explain why on today's episode of the Locked on Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked on Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. As always, I want to personally thank you all for making this your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On Mobile podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. When Dusty May turned down Louisville for Michigan, it prompted Cardinal fans to ask, well, who will Louisville gravitate towards now? There have been three names um, that have been talked about the most. Um, Indiana State's Josh Schertz, College of Charlestown's Pat Kelsey, and Seton Hall's Shaheen Holloway. All three solid mid-major coaches, but there are legitimate concerns as to whether or not they would succeed at Louisville. So we're going to break down the candidacy of each of the coaching options and talk their resume, uh, projection, upside, concerns, etc. Before we talk about Josh Schertz, who, uh, if you're on social media, it seems like is the presumed favorite, I think we need to talk about the fan base. If you were someone that fit into two categories. Number one, if you weren't a big Dusty May fan at all because of his resume, or number two, if you had to feel like you were doing mental gymnastics to convince yourself that he was the right coach, chances are if you hear any of these three names, they're not going to move you. You're not going to be excited judging based upon social media, which doesn't represent the majority at all times. But I would say that if any of these three names were hired at Louisville, many would not be fans right away. Um, there have been a lot of concern on social media that, you know, you just finished 12 and 52 over the past two years. Um, you're looking to make a splash higher. And Scott Drew says no, Dusty May says no, but all the other names that people want you to go after, whether you have or not, they don't come to fruition. And these are the three likely candidates. Now we are obviously playing on the hypothetical that these are the most likely candidates now. And if that is the case, I think that a lot of the fan base simply just won't be inspired. Pretty uninspiring moves, regardless of if these coaches are pretty solid. I think X's and O's wise, all three have some pros that they bring to the table. But from an optics point of view, Louisville fans still view this job as a top five to seven in college basketball. And this sort of hurts that narrative that, okay, well, you can only you might now maybe you're at a disadvantage due to the conference situation and things like that but there's no NCAA black cloud any longer you have a great NIL infrastructure you have great facilities a program that's prestigious as Louisville it just feels like it would probably be a little underwhelming for the fan base to believe that this is a five to top five to seven job in college basketball and then turn around and you have to hire a mid-major coach that really doesn't have a, a ton of proven track record or any tournament success. Now, I understand that this hire isn't going to be made just simply to please the fans. You could say that that was the downfall of 2022 when they hired Kenny Payne to please the fan base and the donors. So you're going with what coach you feel like can project to bring Louisville back to a level of prominence. And a lot of people don't think either or any of these three coaches could do that, um, and because this is a very important hire, a lot of the fan base is sort of turned off by the notion that you're going to take a flyer on um, a mid-major coach who may or may not work out, and just with the gravity of this hire, it seems like there's a lot of risk to not um, really make a splash, and I think a lot of Louisville fans are uneasy, and I think that, that honestly, that is the main reason why Fans got a little concerned when Dusty May turned the job down because they were afraid of something like this happening. But 
regardless, we're going to break down the candidates. We're going to discuss what each brings to the table, starting out with Josh Schertz. Josh, um, most notably for coaching Indiana State, just had a 30-6 and six record in year three this past year, the highest net-ranking team to miss the NCAA tournament. The Sycamores should have made the NCAA tournament. Um, they have a very exciting brand of basketball. Um, Schertz is a coach that excelled in the D2 ranks, spent almost a decade and a half coaching at Lincoln Memorial, took them to multiple D2 Final Fours, and then made the jump to D1 at Indiana State. Had a rough first year in 2021-2022. It's not an easy place to win at. That's you know probably understating it. He then increased the win total by 12 the next year and seven to get to 30 and six. And uh, they fell to the hands of the Drake Bulldogs and ultimately landed in the NIT. So pros with Josh Dirtz is that he's won everywhere he's been. Only two stops, but he's won both places. He's turned those places around, uh, especially Indiana State. That's not an easy job to turn around. So to be able to do that in year three and win 30 games. It's pretty impressive. He's 48 years old with a $365,000 salary. I'm not sure if there's a buyout, but if there is, it's very, very small in the grand scheme of things. So money will not be an option or money will not be an issue, I should say, in this particular case. So maybe more gets uh, donated to NIL, who knows? And he has an offensive style of basketball that is absolutely contagious. It is very fun to watch. I watched a couple of Indiana State games, and let's just be honest, it is a very fun style of basketball. And with better players in the system, who knows just how good offensively it can be. I know many national people feel like Shirts is is a candidate to be, um, you know, a candidate to get a, a better job here soon and rise up the coaching ranks. Indiana State was, I believe, number eight in scoring offense. They averaged eighty four point six points per game. You can say what you want about the um, the strength of schedule, which is not all that great, but he did do well. And you can also say that, well, recruiting is a lot NIL-based now. So, yeah, with a solid NIL infrastructure, he'll be able to succeed well with better players. The cons for shirts, the concerns, number one, is that I know that they got snubbed this year, but Josh Hertz has never coached in the NCAA Division I tournament. Um, has not coached in one, has not – um, you know, has not won a game obviously in the tournament. So there's some concern there that it feels like, you know, for all these three guys and, and a couple other mid-major candidates, it just feels like with Josh Hurts being rumored to be the leader for the St. Louis job, it would make a ton of sense for him to go to a place like St. Louis and then go to a place like Louisville. I think oh, for some of these coaches, in my opinion, for a job like Louisville, you should go to another spot that's a step up that's maybe not a power five but a group of five conference like um the american athletic or maybe even the conference usa and succeed there and then you get looks for the global job making that jump right away it's pretty risky and i think that that's the main thing is can he handle the pressures of this job sure he's been a winner where he's been but it's not as high d1 spotlight as global is and even though nil is key for recruiting People will wonder, well, when you hire a guy like Josh Schertz, based upon the name, it's not going to spark a ton of players that run in line to play for the Louisville Cardinals. And as would say, heck, even maybe a Dusty May or, I mean, dare I say, a Mick Cronin, et cetera. So the name weight that Schertz will have right away, it's not going to help for next year's team. The sample size is just low as well. There's a pretty real risk when you look at a coach that has a resume very, very similar to Scott Davenport. And people look at Scott and they are appreciative for what he's doing in the city. A guy that uh, has won a D2 national championship and already won his conference like Josh Schertz did. Scotty Davenport has a very, very similar um, coaching resume 
to Josh Schertz. I think that Nick Coffey actually was the one that said, well, if if Schertz is on the table, then why not Scotty Davenport? And I think that that is a very, very, um, very, very well made argument. I think Davenport's a little bit older than Schertz, but still resumes pretty much line up the same. The offense, sure, it is electric. It's contagious. It's fun to watch. But is that going to work at the next level? For every next big thing, as it relates to mid-major coaches, there are five to six that just don't pan out. So with any mid-major coach, you're going to have some concerns. And I think that's why a lot of people are, are uneasy at the moment because of, well, you don't know if he's going to pan out or not. And if he doesn't pan out, then global basketball is in a very, very tough spot. They already are, but I don't even want to imagine uh, if this hire doesn't work out. So there also was a situation to where, um, and I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth or make any implications. I'm simply just reporting of what happened on Monday afternoon. Uh, Bob Valvano on ESPN Louisville stated that, um, or alluded to, I believe it was that Josh Schertz told, I think it was Bob, told Bob that Dusty told him, Dusty and Bob are, or Dusty and Josh are good friends, that Dusty was getting death threats for this or from this fan base for this job. Um, and that was one of the reasons why he didn't take the job. And I'm not going to get too much into that because I don't know the validity of it. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. Uh, I'm just simply stating what was said over the airwaves today. If it was, if it's right, then shame on the fan base. Uh, even if it's a small portion, shame on the fan base. But if it's not right, then I, I don't appreciate the fan base being um, blamed. It feels like the fan base is being blamed for a lot of stuff over the past two years. And this is just another thing that grants we don't know if it's right or it's wrong in terms of if it's valid, if it happened. But um, I think a lot of people sort of didn't like that Shirts was saying that to people because of what's well, like, well, why would you sort of paint your soon-to-be fan base in, uh, in a wrong light before you even take the job? But regardless, I think that a lot of people have concerns over Shirts. I think Shirts of the three – probably would be my second pick for this job, um, but he was further down my list to begin with. So Schertz has a great offensive style. He turned around Indiana State. He won at the D2 level, but there's lack of sample size with recruiting, with D1 success, no NCAA tournament appearances, et cetera. You can call him an up-and-comer all you want. He's 48 years old and has not coached in one Division one. NCAA tournament. So I think that that is where the um, the concerns lie. Moving down the line, a coach that has been to the NCAA tournament that has some concerns as it relates to success in the tournament, but he's been there, is College of Charleston coach Pat Kelsey. He has a tie to a former global head coach that we're going to explain here in a second. Kelsey has the mindset and mentality that would succeed here but like I said there are some concerns that we're going to explain here momentarily after we talk about our friends over at Nissan this week's March Madness, March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan each week we're picking one team that stands out a team that's pushed it further than the rest just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs the Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with Illinois this Thursday in the Sweet 16. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Also want to take this time to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets. FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on the upset in the Sweet 16 or the one seeds to go to the Final Four. It's time to continue dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 
Okay, moving right along, talking about three new coaching candidates that we hadn't previously discussed in depth on this show. We just talked about Josh Schertz. Pat Kelsey sort of in the same boat. He's 48 years old, making $1 million this season, has a buyout of $1 million. So like Schertz, there's not much of an issue from a, from a financial standpoint. Um, Kelsey spent time as a Power 5 assistant. He was with Wake from 04 to 09 then was the associate head coach from 2009 to 2011 under former Louisville men's basketball head coach Chris Mack. He then took over the Winthrop head coaching job in 2012, um, only had one losing season, had multiple seasons with less than 10 uh, losses, three or two technically um, NCAA tournament appearances. The 2020 year was canceled due to COVID. He then got the job at Charleston. With 17 and 15 first year and the past two years has been fantastic. 31 and 4 in 2022-23 and 27 and 8 this past year, both trips resulting in NCAA tournament appearances. Unfortunately for Kelsey, with four NCAA tournament appearances, he has not won a single game in the NCAA tournament. I think that that's where the cons lie is that, yes, as it relates to comparing him and Josh Schertz, He's been to the tournament. He's brought two different teams to the tournament. However, he has not won a single tournament game. And I understand, well, you are taking a lesser team to the tournament. Well, mid-majors do upset teams all the time. And Pat Kelsey does not have a team that has gotten to pull up an upset against another team. So there's the lack of tournament success that really makes you question. Uh, obviously, with shirts, the same thing applies to Kelsey. There are questions as to whether or not he can handle the spotlight, whether he can handle recruiting at a high level. Can he recruit at a high level? If it was a question for Chris Mack, it's a question for Pat Kelsey. Um, the Also, I, I think the playing styles are fairly different. It does make you wonder, is that playing style of sort of playing fast and um, running up and down the court, is that going to translate to the Power 5 level? That is a question to be had. Um, so a lot of the same cons, I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over. The same concerns for a guy like Pat Kelsey and Josh Schertz is the recruiting, the upside. Are they going to be able to handle a job like Louisville? It's not going to be a hire that fan base is going to gravitate towards. In fact, there's probably going to be a good amount of pushback from the fan base because, you know, their expectations were through the roof. Louisville, in their opinion, is a top job and to – have to settle with a mid-major coach that hasn't won a single tournament game, or if they have, it's you know just one and done. It's going to rub the fan base the wrong way until they start winning. I'm not saying that they can't start winning, but I am saying that until they do, you're not going to gain a lot of the fan base, at least their favor, um, with just the hire of either one of these two coaches. Kelsey, however, he does have success at two different Division I programs. He rebuilt Winthrop. He showed that he could build a uh, build a program in a culture there. He also went to Charleston and, and succeeded right away. Uh, so he's got the, the winning ability there. He's got local ties. He's from Cincinnati. He understands the area. Um, he's been an assistant at a Power 5 conference. So he has at least an idea of what to expect. And Pat Kelsey reminds me a lot of um, Eric Musselman, sort of Eric Musselman light. And what I mean by that is I don't think he is as crazy as Musselman sometimes, but he's very animate. He um, is not afraid to speak his mind. I think his press conference would go over well with this fan base because he's a very energetic coach that – People probably view as corny, but his players love to play for him. And he's a guy that I think would understand expectations. He demands accountability from his players and mentions that over and over. Excuse me. And he would be a pro global type of guy to where – you're wanting a coach that is unapologetically all about Louisville and he's vocal about it. I think Pat Kelsey is probably a coach that fits that mold. So you got the passion, the local ties, the ability to win. But like I said, there are some concerns, the lack of tournament success, the recruiting, the lack of overall success at the mid-major level. Number two is 
why has Kelsey not been um, – why is he not taking another job? Xavier's opened up twice. He's on a moderate, and he's got passed over two times. Now, Steele had some connections with boosters. Um, Sean Miller obviously has the name, the weight with the name that comes with it. So there's the the opportunity there, but hasn't really gotten approached for a ton of um, interest. If he has, he's turned it down, but not a ton of big-time interest so far. So it does make you wonder, well, the lack of tournament success is kind of kind of makes you wonder. So like Josh Shirts, I think you would have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to convince yourself that this is the right hire. Right hire. I think Pat Kelsey is a great X's and O's coach, but is he a fit for the Lola job? That is a question that many just don't necessarily know the answer to a name that's gotten a lot of flack on social media that I think would be the best of the three options is a coach like Shaheen Holloway at Seton Hall he did something a couple years ago that Louisville fans will thank him for for quite some time but I'm not necessarily so sure that this is the right fit for either party and I'm gonna explain why here momentarily after I tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. It has the tools to find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else and does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy that, in fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Shaheen Holloway is the final name that we will discuss on this Monday edition of the Locked on Global podcast. Louisville having to pivot in their search from Dusty May to seemingly a handful of different candidates. We talked about Josh Schertz, talked about Pat Kelsey, Shaheen Holloway, some of the same pros and cons. Um, Success at a mid-major program. Um, Cons would be recruiting. You don't know what you're going to get recruiting-wise and whether or not he is a flash-in-the-pan type coach. Just overall lack of sustained success. But it's a little bit different. Now, Shaheen does have a $2.4 million salary, so I don't think that's going to be an issue either. I'm not sure what the buyout is. I don't think it's listed. I believe that Seton Hall is a private university. Could be wrong, so I'm not necessarily so sure that the buyout's going to be listed. But in terms of pros, it's a little bit different. Um, Different from Shirts and Kelsey. Now, great, and I will preface that by saying that fans would still have to convince themselves that Shaheen would be the right hire. And I think a lot of the fan base just hates that they would have to do that at a position like Louisville that they view in a higher light, that they feel like they can go get a Power 5 coach a sitting power five coach and, and bring them to the program. One that has won decently. Shaheen Holloway does have some tournament success in 2022. He took St. Peter's on that magical run to the elite eight beat Kentucky in the first round, which a lot of Louisville fans will thank him for. So unlike shirts and Kelsey Shaheen has made the NCAA tournament and won four games there. So, Um, That was his only appearance in the NCAA tournament with St. Peter's, which was not an easy place to turn around. He had three winning seasons out of four. And then he took over a job at Seton Hall, which is his alma mater. He played there first year, 17 and 16. Um, They went to the NIT. I look at what Seton Hall did the year prior to that. And you go back and and look at it. And I believe that... um, it wasn't necessarily a great season the year prior. So looking at what they did in 2021 and 22 under Kevin Willard, actually, no, they, I, I stand corrected. They went 21 and 11 the year prior. So I, I do stand corrected, but this past year, uh, Seton Hall had a decently tough schedule, went 22 and 12, uh, went to the NIT, another team like Indiana state probably should have been right there in tournament consideration. And, in my opinion, should have made the tournament, but didn't, and he in two years has not made the tournament at Seton Hall, which was a program that wasn't all that, um, it wasn't all that in a bad spot. So is Shaheen Holloway willing to leave his alma mater already after two seasons before he accomplishes what he's probably set out to accomplish? I don't think so. 
I think that maybe it's willing to at least sort of kick the tires, but I think for both places or both parties here, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Shaheen Holloway probably, I mean, makes sense why he would make a jump to Louisville, a pay increase, and uh, you're at a more prestigious program, but this is his alma mater. So I don't necessarily think that you're going to see him leave for that alma mater. Um, and then from Louisville's side, sort of the same thing with the past two coaches that we talked about, the concerns over sustained tournament success, um, whether or not they could recruit here, whether or not they could handle the job. Uh, the spotlight of Louisville, the expectations, it's not for everyone. And you have to be a different type of coach that can um, understand that there will be some criticism. There will be some overall concern if you don't win. And Josh Hurd said it, you don't really get the luxury of a, a normal rebuild at a place like Louisville. Time is not a time is a luxury, I should say. You, you don't get a ton of time at, like you would at other spots. So Shaheen Holloway in his third season probably makes sense that he doesn't leave. But for Louisville, I mean, you are basically hiring him off of one tournament run with St. Peter's. So all three of these coaches, put it this way, if you were concerned about Dusty May's resume, you're going to be concerned about Josh Schertz. You're going to be concerned about Pat Kelsey. You're going to be concerned about Shaheen Holloway. Dusty – made it to a final four. Shaheen made it to an elite eight. Both of those are, are hard to overlook. I mean, whether they're flukes or not, St. Peter's was a 15 FAU was a nine seed. So a little bit of a different um, dynamic there, but I, I think that ultimately the word I keep coming back to is uninspiring when it, when it comes to what the fan base's reaction would be. Um, no doubt, I think that all three of these coaches now, Shaheen runs a, a very good defense. His teams are very good defensively. Offensively is where there are some concerns. So even if you are a good X's and O's coach, you could be a good coach, but not a good fit for the Louisville job at this point in time. And I think that that's sort of the, the mantra and the takeaway of this episode is that although these three coaches could one day be very good high division one coaches taking a flyer on any of the three at this point in time, you are assuming that there will be a good amount of risk and concern and question marks as to whether or not that they're ready to make this jump right away. Even if they are in the future, will they get time to turn this around with the current state of Louisville basketball? Truthfully, you should be able to get back to the tournament or tournament consideration next year with the transfer portal, with the NIL infrastructure in place, there are no excuses that really can be made here. And um, I I'm interested to see where Josh Hurd goes with this. I think if any of these three names get hired, you're going to see the Louisville fan base um, very unhappy. I personally would be in wait and see approach. Um, I I'm not going to write off any coach until I see them actually on the court, but you have to win. And if your goal is to get the fan base back pretty quickly, the higher probably doesn't come from this list. I acknowledge that all three of these coaches have done very great work in their respective coaching tenures. But at this point in time, the fit is questionable in 2024. Would it be different if this hire is made in 2028 when they have four more years coaching at a, at a respective stop? Potentially. But right now, there's a lot of people concerned, and that's one of the reasons why there was a good amount of concern when Dusty May turned down this job because it was asked, if not him, then who? Because it seems like there's no Will Wade. It seems like there's no Eric Musselman, no Jerome Tang, um, no Mick Cronin, and you're going to go with an unproven mid-major coach. And if that's the way that Josh Hurd wants to go with this, I'll respect it. I'll wait to see what happens. There's a lot of risk involved, and um, you know, obviously, I am. I would imagine he's doing his homework in this regard. So hopefully, he makes the best hire for this program. But that's going to wrap up today's episode of the show. Everyone, have a great day. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.